My name is Nick Bennett. It's a great pleasure to welcome you again to the 19th Annual Blue Mountains Music Festival. This next guy is, I reckon, one of the most exciting, innovative artists on the planet. He just happens to be Australian via Israel. He once told me some years ago that just by chance he got to play on a guitar that was owned by the great Nick Drake. Some of you might know him. I own CDs from both these artists, so they speak to me. In 2005, he put out the incredibly popular, platinum-selling, self-financed, independent release called Autumn Flow. Thankfully, a fourth album has arrived. It came out last week. So popular that it sold out here last night. Would you please welcome Lior? Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that introduction. Maybe 30 years to two years ago, the ABC's Paper Giants, and you're sitting in your TV room or wherever you like to lounge and watch the box. What were you thinking when you saw this story of your life before your eyes? Well, it's, it's, it's like becoming Australian of the Year, really. It's something news for the music industry. Massive, I think. Look, the cab drivers are talking about it. Ah. Those that were born in the 60s and 70s who love Cole Chisel and grew up with it. It's really big news. This is a rarity. The last time the band got together was for a charity tsunami event four years ago in Melbourne. Before that, it was six years ago in the round, and that was a massive sellout. Thank you, Ali Brunning. You got the gloves on this morning. It's a wee bit chilly up here, isn't it? It sure is. I we thought you meant the gloves on as in ready uh, to fight. Oh, well, that too. Someone said yesterday the wind chill was down to minus one, but I don't need to remind anybody just how cold it is if you're in the camping grounds. Congratulations if you've survived three nights in those camping grounds because you've been battered by everything that Bass Straits had to offer. G'day. When musical genius manifests, it's easy to be dazzled by the sheer brilliance of song. A singer can transfix you by the emotion the performance evokes. When you dig deeper and find out what makes the muso tick, it can be a very special, sometimes tragic, funny story. Ray is just like that. Hi, it's Nick Bennett on the road in Tokyo this week. Hey, Jim Nick Morrison Nick. from The Doors used to hang out, and you know, the spirit lives on. Space Invaders game. At age of 14, she'd become the youngest artist ever to have the Over the years, and the regular support cast of M, Miss Money Penny, and Techno Wiz Q all return to The World Is Not Enough. Hello, can I just have your attention? In the middle of Turkey's Bosphorus Sea. Yeah, about 23 hours a day. It's become a hit machine for people like Kylie. For me, since uh, I came out publicly. However, they still managed to create the most successful pop show. They've heard of meeting Annie change your life. And I had a look on the net last night. It's amazing. All three guitarists have contributed to James Bond soundtracks. That was a massive sellout. The cab drivers are talking about it. I may as well enjoy it here on the brown couch in the green room at the 2010 ARIA Hall of Fame. Presets! Thank you so much for putting your heart and soul into sound relief. God bless. Good night. What did it feel like to come out? Well, it wasn't, you see, it wasn't a coming out to me. It was, my coming out was years and years ago. I came out um, to my family and friends. To me, that's coming out. Coming out to the man on the street is not coming out, you know? Anything George has done for your fan base? I mean, how are they thinking now you've gone from being a guy who was a babe magnet to a guy now who was a, a bloke magnet? A bloke magnet. <laughs> I think I've been a babe and bloke magnet for quite a while, actually. You've got a great sense of humour, haven't you? That's something which... Maybe. It's not something I'm generally, that's generally applied to, me, to yeah. uh, conversations about me. Why is that, do you think? Because I've not particularly wanted to share it with people. Nick here with a very tough assignment. I'm retracing some of the steps of some great films shot here in South Australia on the SA Tourism Commission's movie map. Hollywood couldn't even come close to the South Australian outback. 
The area is largely untouched, which makes it perfect for films like The Tracker. Beyond the quietness, do you think there's music here amongst the hills and amongst the trees? Oh, there's always music if you want to sit on the end of a rock and just listen to the wind blowing through the trees or blowing through the rocks or the, or the water or something. You can always hear some sort of sounds that, that, that are natural. Waiting to strive. Our final stop, Nilpina, near Parachilna. It's here that they shot parts of Rabbit Proof Fence. Stay here. I'll come back and get you. And of course, we can't go without showing you that famous fence. They came, uh, came up along the fence to this point here, and this, this is where uh, Daisy decided that she was going to head to Waluna to catch up with her mother who was coming in on the, on the train. And uh, so she, she heads, heads off in that direction towards Waluna. And the uh, Molly and uh, sorry, it was yeah, Gracie that went that way. Molly and Daisy continued along the along the fence. Now this, according to the movie, pretty much leads all the way to Western Australia, doesn't it? Well, that's right through the uh, through the north of Western Australia. That's, yeah, that's right. Do you want to have a go at it? Certainly. Yeah, I'd it know. It looks like it could be Western it Australia. Might be down to cut here. lunch.